The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Lord, be on my mind, be on my lips, and in my heart. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand them your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So, be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel continues where last week's gospel left off. We are still in the Sermon of the Mount, the beginning of Matthew's gospel, when Jesus is gathered with his disciples. They expect a Messiah who will bring about the kingdom of God. For them, that means someone who will overthrow their enemies, the Rome, and establish the kingdom. It's up in the hills of Galilee where revolutionaries would talk. And so that is the expectation of the crowd is that Jesus is going to lead a revolt against Rome, against their enemies. And what does he say? He continues to quote the law from of old, bringing it to a higher standard. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth comes from the Old Testament. But it was intended not to justify retaliation. It was intended to limit the retaliation of those of hardened hearts. Jesus says, but I say to you, offer no resistance to the one who is evil. Another translation is, do not return evil for evil. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn and offer the other as well. Jesus isn't talking about allowing people to abuse us and take advantage of us. But he is saying that that common gesture of a backhanded slap that was the common insult of his day is to hit somebody on the right cheek. He says, offer them your other cheek. Do not respond insult with insult, but do something to help them see the error of their ways. If someone wants to go to law with, over, with you over your tunic to sue somebody for their inner garment, give them your cloak as well, your outer garment. Again, do not fight, but love. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. That's referring to the law that Rome, who were the occupiers of the land, had the right to impose one mile of service for any citizen, anyone in their jurisdiction, to carry the armor or the equipment of the soldiers. The Jews detested being forced into labor like that. They wanted to fight against that and resist and demand their rights, and Jesus said, go two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. Does this make any sense? This is so contrary to what the audience of Jesus wanted to hear. 
because, again, they expected the kingdom of God to be brought in Jesus and that it would overthrow Rome. But what Jesus is doing, he's bringing the kingdom of God truly, but a kingdom of God that will last for all empires, for Rome was to come and go, as did nation and nation. Jesus is giving us a way to live in this world that will transform the world to be salt and light. Remember what he said earlier? And so, how do we transform those who hate, those who are sinners? We can show them the truth. We can argue. But will that change their heart? No. Only love will change their heart. And then maybe they will listen to the truth. Yes, we are to destroy our enemies, but not by hurting them, but by converting them. Abraham Lincoln gave a famous quote during the Civil War when he was meeting with the southern generals. And his advisors said to him, what are you doing talking to the enemy? We should destroy our enemy. And his response, what better way to destroy our enemies than to make them our friends. It's easy to hate our enemies, and we all have enemies, don't we? But Jesus is telling us we must love everyone, including our enemies. And this seems like folly to the world. That's what that second reading says. The world's wisdom is folly to God, and God's wisdom is folly to the world, or foolishness. It seems like it's weakness, and it won't make a difference, doesn't it? But if you look at history, it was in the year 312, but the Roman government was, in a way, overthrown, converted to Christianity. Jesus and his disciples did not succeed during Jesus' lifetime, but through his death and resurrection, the one who gave us the example of resisting evil to not return evil for evil, but rather to love and to the end even when it seems like it's not working. And then when his resurrection showed that good is more powerful than evil, and he breathed that Holy Spirit on the early church, they went out in the midst of a divided and violent world and loved, even to the point of martyrdom. And that witness of love, that responding to sin and hate with love and forgiveness, changed the, the world. In 312, the Roman Empire converted same thing, nonviolent resistance overthrew or gained freedom for India against Britain, led by Gandhi. Civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, standing for justice but doing it with love and nonviolence. And it wasn't their cause that won over the hearts, it was the images of people standing for their rights, res not responding to violence, the dogs, the fire hoses, the beatings, but responding only in love. And that changed hearts. Jesus' teaching is very hard to do. But there's more than just the social level of the teaching. On a personal level, here's what's going on. You see, evil is in the world, and evil seeks to draw us into its web. And when people hurt us or do wrong against us, the goal of that, whether the person knows it or not, is not to hurt us, but to get us to respond by doing evil. To get us to respond with hate, seeking revenge or lack of forgiveness. Because when we do that, we're filled with negative emotions. We're possessed by that anger and that hate. It drives us. It makes our eyes focus down away from heaven. And we become a slave to hate. And we can't love when we hate. And so that's the real goal of evil. And Jesus is saying, don't become what you hate. If you have enemies and we respond the same way they respond, what good is that? Even if you win your cause. Because in the end, We'll never have justice and peace and love by changing our structures, even though that's important, but only by the people who make up those structures being loving people, holy people, 
And that's the message of today's readings. First reading says, be holy, for your God is holy. Second reading says, we are temples of the Lord. The gospel, Jesus is saying, be holy, be perfect. That's another response, way of saying it. Because God lets his sun shine on the bad and the good alike. He lets his rain fall on the just and unjust. We are called to love everyone. It's going to look different depending on who that person is. There isn't such thing as tough love or love is not always nice. But our goal in every human interaction is to love and to not be filled with that hate and that anger. And so today's world and today's readings challenge us just as they challenged Jesus and his hearers in a very violent and divided world. Our world, too, is filled with much division. We could all name many enemies, could we not? Both in the public realm, in our politics, in the social policies, and also in the moral realm, but also our personal lives. People who've hurt us, people who we want to not forgive. And sometimes it thinks like it feels better to hate. But we must love our enemies. We must forgive them. Otherwise, we'll become what we hate. And so Jesus is saying, be holy, and that's what I'm calling you to do. Because his disciples at that time wanted to go out there and change the world, fight for justice and right, which is good. But until we're first converted, we're just going to cause more damage, even if our cause is right, if we don't do it with love. So he's saying, take three years. Let me train you how to love let me know, let me allow you to know me, and then I'll send you. And that's the dynamic of our justice work and our work in the world, is to let God dwell in us first. The second reading says we're temples of the Holy Spirit. Does it, you've heard this said many times ago before, that God dwells in us, right? And we say that so easily, but what a miracle that is is that through these sacraments, baptism and Eucharist, Jesus truly does dwell in us. He wants to reveal himself to us so that we may know him. And that love transforms us, and then we take it into the world. Some of my favorite scripture passage, John chapter 14. Jesus says, Whoever holds to my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father. And I shall love him and reveal myself to him. Right? We don't believe our faith simply because it's the truth. We believe our faith because Christ reveals himself to us. Anyone who loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we shall come to him and make our home in him. We are temples of that Holy Spirit. God's love dwells in us. And only when we are in touch with that and have allowed our hearts to be softened can we go out and soften the hearts of others, even if our cause is just and right. And so Jesus is challenging us to be holy so that as holy instruments, we can go out and love our enemies and bring about the kingdom.